Well, hi there, Internet. My name's Court. You've got courtside seats for my review of Gemini Man. Let's do it. Gemini Man is an action drama sci-fi from director Ang Lee and Paramount Pictures. The film stars Will Smith, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, Clive Owen, and Benedict Wong. An over-the-hill hitman faces off against a younger clone of himself. First off, I'd just like to say thanks to my friends at InTheSeats.ca for hooking up this screening. In the Seats is a movie and TV review website based here in Toronto. They do reviews, they do giveaways, sometimes I write for them. I will leave a link in the description. I hope you go on over there, check them out, show them some love. Now, a lot has been made of the technological advancements in this movie, and Ang Lee always has been kind of about that. I will talk about that stuff a little bit later, but I will also tell you that, lo and behold, Ang Lee came out and introduced the film last night. I put the footage up on my channel. I'll link to it up there somewhere. Let's talk about the acting first. I really like Will Smith in this movie. I dig him as an action guy, and at 51 he still proves he's got great physicality, and he differentiates his performance between the two roles really nicely. Benedict Wong gets most of the humor in this movie, some of which lands, some of which doesn't, but he does get a few good pops. Really likable dude, he's a lot of fun to watch. And I really liked Mary Elizabeth Weinstead in this flick, her character's really likable, she's badass, and she, or possibly her stunt double, I don't know, handles the physicality really, really well. And it was nice to see Clive Owen again, I haven't seen that guy in a while. He's a little over the top in the flick, he's chewing the scenery a little bit, but I enjoyed seeing him. And most of the action in this movie is pretty darn good, particularly a sequence involving motorcycles, which was straight up awesome. The final set piece was a little bit ridiculous, I have to say, but overall I thought the action was shot really, really well. It wasn't too shaky, you could actually see what was going on. What a novel approach. Now to get to the technology, I did a little digging, and this is not digital de-aging. They did not digitally de-age Will Smith. This is actually a CGI character. They took footage of his face from back in the day. I like to imagine it was from Fresh Prince. And they made a digital map, which they then mapped onto, I don't know if it was Will Smith or a stunt double. And I have to say it's fairly convincing throughout the film. You know, with CGI characters, you have the sort of uncanny valley effect where your brain just knows that something isn't quite right. And usually we really notice it in the eyes. Here, I thought the eyes looked absolutely excellent. Where I really noticed it was in the young Will Smith's mouth. The way his lips and jaw articulated themselves around the words he was saying, something just looked weird. Also, the shape of his mouth was different than that of older Will Smith. I don't know if that was something they did on purpose or maybe the shape of his mouth was different when he was younger and I just don't remember. I don't know but it looked strange. There are a couple scenes in this movie where this CGI Will Smith looks really good, and there's one scene towards the end where it's like, did you guys forget how to do it? Now this movie is shot in a high frame rate of 120 frames per second, whereas most movies are shot in 24 frames per second. The first Hobbit movie was shot in 48 frames per second, and I thought it looked awful. It had that really fluid quality of like soap operas, and this is shot in 120, which is even more than double. Didn't notice at all. It looked totally normal to me. Now, I know that the 2D versions of The Hobbit were presented in 24 frames per second, and the screening I went to was in 2D, so maybe it was just 24. I don't know. I should probably look that up. But for all the good action and the oftentimes fairly impressive technology, there were a few things that I really didn't like about this movie. First off, the dialogue is not good. There were certain lines where, like, this guy's gonna say these exact words now, and then that happened. And the movie's really predictable. Like, you see everything coming a mile away. And there were a lot of moments of like, okay, you've told me this about this character, but now this is happening? That doesn't jive. Also, this isn't a complaint, I just think it's funny. This movie was co-written by Game of Thrones' David Benioff, and there's a character in here named Varys. I think that's funny. Gemini Man is a serviceable action flick. It's got some great set pieces, some genuinely fun moments, but it tries to have these big ideas and questions of morality, and yet it brings nothing new to the conversation. These questions have been asked by much better movies. It's okay, it's not great, it's not gonna change your life, but I'm glad I saw it. Now I don't have a proprietary rating system as of yet, so I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna give Gemini Man. And I think I'm gonna give Gemini Man a... Going out of my mind, I thought she was fine, don't know if her body is hers. Whoa, whoa, man, hold up, what you yeah. doing? Out of 10. So now I wanna know, have you seen Gemini Man? What did you think about it? What is your favorite Ang Lee film of all time? Whatever your thoughts, hit the comments below, let's discuss. If you enjoyed this review, please smash that like button and give it a share if you really enjoyed it. And hey, why not take a second, do me a favor, click subscribe and ring that bell to subscribe to my channel for more movie reviews, entertainment news, trailer reactions, all that good stuff. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.